In the latest version of Studio One, version 5.1 retrospective recording was added. So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at that feature. And before we get started, just know that if you are someone who is interested in one-on-one -on -one training, uh, I do offer that and you can contact me via the email that's listed in the description below. This is done through Zoom and I can guide you through whatever you'd like to learn by showing you directly if you'd like to share control. And then I can show you uh, in person, so to speak, how to go about whatever it is that you'd like to accomplish in Studio One. And with that, let's just go ahead and get started. So in this song, I have a presence with a piano patch, uh, Falcon, and then a little drum loop here for a little bit later in a few minutes. But in its simplest form, retrospective recording is basically going to provide a buffer, a discrete buffer for each instrument track within your song. And this is only going to work with MIDI, not audio. So whatever track that you have selected, Studio One will record the MIDI data coming in for that instrument track in the background or in the buffer for the selected track without you having to enter into record or even start playback. Just keep in mind though that the instrument track does need to be either armed for recording or monitoring or both in order for this to be active, that buffer to be active. Otherwise the MIDI information coming in won't be recorded. So as a simple example, on the first instrument track that we've got here, there's a presence with the piano patch. So let's actually click on the eye here and open up the inspector. And we can see down below here, we now have a new button for the retrospective recording feature. And initially it's gonna be gray. But if we play a few notes, I'm gonna play this on the controller. I'm using the uh, Atom. We can see that that then turns red. And I can then click this to create a MIDI part based on what was recorded in the buffer, even though I didn't play back or enter into record. So I'll click that and we can see that that's placed right at the cursor here because this function or this feature is going to take into consideration where the playback cursor is. Uh, so let's delete that out and I'll move the cursor here. And we can see that once I delete that, it returns to gray. If I play a few more notes, okay, it turns red again. Our cursor is here. I will click and we can see that our note begins right at the uh, area where our playback cursor is. I will delete that out and let's come back to the beginning of the track just because I'd like to show just a couple other ways that you can add the MIDI part besides clicking on that. If we come to the track column and right click, then we can see down here we have recall re retrospective recording. We also have a shortcut key, which would be shift plus the asterisk on the number pad. So if I click here, then we can bring our MIDI part into the song. Or also, if you have a full-size QWERTY keyboard with a number pad, you can use the asterisk. And of course, you can always assign your own shortcut keys uh, within the options menu if you'd like to change that. Now, in this most basic form, it's, in my opinion, not going to be that useful because most of us are going to be playing to uh, drums or a click track, metronome. So if you try to use this feature just playing without any backing uh, tracks or the click track, then it's not really going to fit into your song. So let's actually delete that out. I think most of us may use it in an instance where, say we have a track that we're working on, and I have this little drum loop here just to give a simple example. We may be experimenting or jamming or whatever on our keyboard or drum controller to some tracks that we already have and it's playing back. And then all of a sudden we say, oh my God, I wish I would have been recording that. That's really where this feature is going to be most useful, in my opinion. So if we imagine that this one drum loop is actually a almost finished song, and we're just trying to get the final touch with, say, a piano part, and uh, we set up a loop for a specific area, and we're experimenting with ideas, I'll go ahead and play this back, and just try to do whatever I can on the 16 pads with a piano, it's going to sound like crap, but uh, as long as we get the point, that's all that matters.
Okay. So say you were doing something like that. Um, then we can see that this has turned red as expected. If we click that, then there's a whole lot of notes in here. Let's uh, actually shift E to expand that out. Actually, I'm going to double click and you can see everything that I played is here. So if I play this back, it's going to sound horrible. Okay, and the reason for this is because, let's close out that edit window, the retrospective recording is going to take into account whatever you have your settings in the record panel set to. And this is important to know. So if we click on this little gear in the transport, let's click that once. We could also use the hotkeys to open up the uh, record panel, Shift, Alt, and R. But we can see that it's set to record mix. So every time we cycle around, it's going to add everything together. Now, if we would have had record takes, then it's going to add takes. Uh, and then you'd have a little icon where you could click to actually, we'll just take a look at that. But just know that if you did do this, if you have this error and you're like, well, I wish that it would have done takes. And now I lost that one good one that I had. What you could do is just control Z and it's going to, uh, take that away. This turns red again, change this to record takes click here. And now each pass is going to be a different take that you can choose. Okay. And let's actually control Z to undo that. And let's see if we can add the takes to layers as well. And then re add that. Okay. Awesome. We can do that. So if you wanted to have individual layers for each pass through that you did, and then just push those to the top using the arrow, then that's also available. So just remember, undo is your friend with this feature, and I'm going to just undo everything. Let's get rid of that. And if you wanted more detailed information or a more detailed tutorial on the different modes of the record panel and how to use all of the features here, I do have a tutorial for that, so I'll leave a little link in the upper right-hand corner there. And it looks like we have something else here. So, oh, it's doing that. So let me control Z a few more times. All right. Now, another important thing to remember or to know is that when you're using this feature, if you have input quantized turned on, then when you're playing back, everything is going to be quantized within the buffer to whatever you have set here. So currently I'm set to 16th notes. So um, when I... Let's put the cursor here and actually, oh, I actually deleted the piano uh, instrument track when I was undoing, but that's okay. Cause I also wanted to show that this feature is available with third party VSTs as well. So here I've got a Falcon. I just played one note and we can see that that one note is there and I still have takes to layers active. Let's go ahead and take these off. Put that on record mix and let's close out the panel and I will undo that. And the last thing that I want to cover about this feature is let's bring back, say, let's bring in a Mai Tai, close out the browser. Let's choose a pad. This feature is also going to record chord CC information that's coming in. So if you make adjustments to parameters, so the Mai Tai, I'm using the Atom controller and the knobs are pre-mapped to certain parameters on the Mai Tai. So let's open up the inspector. We can see that this is gray. I haven't played any notes yet, but if I play back and I'm going to adjust the cutoff here, Let's close out the Mai Tai, and as expected, this is turned red. 
let's go ahead and click that so we can see the two notes that I played. But for this example, let's double click, open up the editor, and then if we take a look down in the parameter automation lane, we can see that we have cutoff has been added. And if we open that or click on it, we can see our automation has also been recorded. So this is not only gonna play the node on, node off information and velocity, but also if you are using knobs and sliders that are sending C, C information to the instruments within your song, then that is gonna be added as well. All right, now the very last thing that we're gonna take a look at is what if you don't want this feature to be active? There is a way for us to disable it. So if we come to Studio One, the Options menu, and then click on the Advanced tab, and I believe it is MIDI, and near the bottom we have Enable Retrospective Recording. So we can always uncheck that box if we don't want that feature to be active.